Good afternoon. I'm Susan Zesch, Executive Director of the Human Rights Program, and I'm very pleased to welcome you all to the teaching to honor the 60th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. We have a very full program this afternoon and evening. We've set up the program so that people can drop in and leave when they need to. Um, we decided we wanted it in this relatively informal set setting, but, that does it, but the informality of the setting doesn't mean that we aren't about some serious business here. I think the primary mission of the human rights program at the University of Chicago has been to integrate human rights into a liberal arts education, to create our students, to create among our students a sense of global citizenship. So I'd like to welcome you all and introduce Professor Michael Geyer, who is the faculty director of the Human Rights Program. So let's begin uh, with our teaching uh, with a note uh, that I got only yesterday that uh, the teaching as a forum was in fact invented uh, by one of our very own. You didn't know that, I didn't know that either. Uh, it is Marshall Salins uh, testified uh, by congressional, uh, verified by congressional record who invented the form of the teaching in 1965, obviously in competition uh, with uh, Berkeley. And there is, as always, a competition who invented the cheese, but let's assume <laughs> our own, uh, our very own uh, faculty and co colleague uh, was it. Um, we are celebrating uh, today, and it should be a celebration, I think, uh, 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 the adoption of, uh, 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 of the Universal Declaration of uh, Human Rights uh, by the United Nations General Assembly, which happened uh, on December 10, 1948. We are a bit early, uh, but obviously in a month you won't be here anymore, so we should celebrate when everybody is still here. Uh, this um, affirmation, uh, the, this declaration was affirmed by then 49 states, no state opposed, but eight states abstained, and those eight uh, were the Soviet Union and its allies. Uh, however, the Soviet Union, as it turned out, was probably then in the subsequent two de decades a somewhat more eager uh, a propagandist of human rights than, uh, surprisingly, the United States, uh, the country you'd expect to, uh, uh, to highlight and inform the global human rights discourse. Well, this history we will, uh, about this history we will learn in a minute. Suffice it to say, the celebration is about a declaration, and nothing but a UN declaration, that proves remarkably to be remarkably sturdy, that it is it has survived 60 years, which is a long time in international politics. Uh, it has uh, it has uh, survived as and has proven to be remarkably universal although nobody really expected this declaration to be anything close to universal because it was essentially signed or ratified by a number of key Western powers with a few others, a few new states coming in, but still it is a declaration at the height of the Cold War, uh, written and affirmed at the, at the height of the Cold War, and still in the age of colonial empire. Basically, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights has survived all that and is flourishing uh, uh, today, although it is uh, not unchallenged, and it is certainly uh, a challenge, not just out there in the world, but very much so in the United States as well. So this is uh, also, it's a moment of celebration, but it is also a moment of rededicating, 
in many ways, an American political and not least an academic agenda, uh, teaching and educating human rights. And I think there is no better person uh, to uh, give an introductory, uh, to, to give us some introductory uh, uh, remarks than uh, Tom Rosenbaum, uh, the provost uh, of uh, the university, and James T. Wilson, distinguished service professor in physics. Uh, he is, uh, as you can discern from his website, apart from being provost of the university, an expert in quant quantum mechanical uh, uh, nature of materials uh, with many honors and awards. Now, it is kind of significant uh, that we have a natural scientist speaking here uh, opening uh, this teaching because, in fact, we have quite a few colleagues from across the aisle, from the natural sciences, from across the midway, that is, in the professional schools, and from across that ditch out west that separates us from the medical school. There is some invisible ditch there that is hard to cross. Uh, in any case, we have faculty from and students from all parts of the university actively engaged in the human rights program and actively engaged, of course, in, uh, in supporting and thinking about a human <coughs> rights agenda. So, Tom, please. Well, it's a great pleasure to be here. Um, I, I was at um, IBM Watson Laboratories in New York 25 years ago as a uh, visiting scientist. Um, and at the same time, Mark Asbell, who was uh, one of the Soviet dissidents, uh, physicists, along with uh, Sharansky and Orlov, who were uh, thrown in jail because of their protests against the uh, uh, human rights conditions in the Soviet Union, he had just been let out emigrated to Israel, which was the demand of the uh, physicists at that time, and was spending six months, as I was, at uh, Yorktown Heights. Um, and I had written a book called Refusenik, which actually is well worth reading, um, which I had read at that time. And so I, I would have the opportunity to chat with him. And one of the things he did when he was spending long times in jail was to refuse to answer any questions they asked him. So they'd ask, you know, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And he just wouldn't because he was afraid, I suppose, that anything he said would be um, twisted in a way that would prevent him from ever going out. And I asked him, well, how did you know to do this? You know, how did the strategy evolve? What were the societal conditions, so on and so forth? And he said, he just knew. It was the only way to do it. It was just obvious. And, you know, I would sit there sort of in bafflement try, trying to understand, you know, how do you get to this point? How do you deal with a situation in a society where you're thrown into conditions where you're not trained, uh, where your usual expectations of what you can and can't do aren't fulfilled. And, and, it, and it struck me um, that there are a few people like Asbel who just know how to do this, who have the moral courage to do it, but also just know how to answer um, that sort of call. And it is, in fact, in the Declaration of Human Rights that Michael talked about, about the primary role of teaching and education about rights and freedoms. And in fact, that's what we can do here at this university and have done powerfully through the human rights program here, is to in fact teach, to educate, to probe, to understand what are the conditions that cause these sorts of circumstances, and also how do individuals like Asbel react what we, can we learn to teach people, hopefully to prevent the conditions that cause this situation, but also how to react, how to think about themselves as individual actors in a society or in a world uh, which has a, lot of, a long way to go. Um, I think the University of Chicago is a special place in this way. Uh, didn't realize we had founded or Marshall had founded uh, the teaching, but um, Certainly, in terms of our interdisciplinary um, approach, and Michael talked about the 
uh, participation of academics from all disciplines in terms of human rights studies. It's one of the great strengths of the universities. I think it's also one of the glories of this subject, if you will, in terms of intellectual endeavor. Uh, we stand out that way. And I think uh, we also uh, stand out in our singular way of thinking about theory and practice. And I think under Susan's leadership, we've certainly gotten to a point with the Human Rights Program where we really see the uh, interaction between scholarly activity and hands-on activity in the field, placing interns around the world, uh, holding conferences where we bring together people who have these different sorts of perspectives to try to synthesize approaches. So I look forward to um, the activities today in this fine tradition. Thank you for attending and also am happy and even relieved to turn over the microphone to someone who actually knows about uh, <laughs> the history and the activities of the uh, Human Rights Program and the Declaration.